Jesus got his body put in a tomb. The next day, two women came to the tomb, saw an angel from the egg room and told them, He has risen from the dead. I've been so encouraged by the number of folks who don't normally attend St John's that are logging in uh, to our services. You are very, very welcome. Please do feel free to add comments to, to the comments column, but also consider emailing me. I'd love to hear from you. This week, we're starting a new series, Do You Know Me? I've been a Christian for a number of years now, and I'm still learning new things about Jesus. But of course, it's very much my prayer that as we go through this series, that we will come to know Jesus, the real Jesus, a lot better. Later, David McNinch will be talking about Jesus, the light of the world. Light guides us and helps us to see. If there was ever a time that we needed guidance, it's now. And I do hope and pray that as, we, uh, as you go through this service with us, that you'll be blessed, that you'll be encouraged, and also that you will find new hope in your life. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you that we come to a God that hears and answers prayer. Father, I thank you that we worship a God that longs to reveal himself to us. 
and that longs to give us light and understanding. And Father, I pray this morning that as we attend this online service, that we will each get to know you better, that more light will come into our lives. For I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, 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 hello! Welcome back to the Chots channel. How are you? Good to see you. We're going to start with the Chots news this week because we actually have some news to report. Church news, like real news, but happy. The first thing to say is that we have an alpha course running this Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Now we're going to roll a little clip to show you a little bit more about it, but if anybody wants to get in contact and know more, then please contact Lorena. Life moves fast, doesn't it? Every day there is so much to fit in. But do you ever stop and think? What's the point of it all? Do you ever ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith and meaning. It's a space to explore the big questions, to say what you think and hear other people's points of view. First up, there's food, then a talk, followed by a discussion. Each talk explores a different aspect of the Christian faith. And then in the small group, you get to say exactly what you think. The aim of the talk is to spark conversation, each week unpacking a different question. There's no obligation to say anything, and there's nothing you can't say. Seriously. It's an opportunity to hear from others and contribute your own perspective in an honest, friendly and open environment. Why not try it out? Also, the Connect Learner streams are starting back this week on Zoom and we've got two different options for you. The first option is the prayer course by 24-7 Prayer and it will be hosted by David McNinch and Shannon Harris where they're able to watch a video together on Zoom of Pete Gregg doing a talk and introducing different themes around prayer and then a discussion time afterwards and that all takes place on Monday nights on Zoom. The second option is with Douglas Britton, an opportunity to delve deeper into the book of Daniel. Now there'll be different things that will be taking place to help you understand the text. They'll look into the archaeological evidence for the book. They'll look into how the book's structured and actually one part of the course they will undertake a Babylonian meal. So please you can sign up on Church Suite and also as well if you want to recommend it to one of your friends who's at another church or whoever or wherever, please do recommend these courses. The more the merrier. Also we are going to host our very own family fun quiz for anybody who wants to join on next Friday night at 7pm. The link will be sent out next week but it will just be a pub quiz sort of style. It will be family friendly, questions from all over. Please join in. The McNinches are hosting so it's going to be a party. Now it's time for the big hello. Now I know some of you have been cutting your own hair. I have not. I look like Roddy McClellan's long lost brother. But if you have, we would love to see photos and videos of you cutting your own hair. So please send them in to admin at stjohnsonlithgo.org and we will play them next week. Here's this week's entrance of people having a good time at Easter. Church news, like real news, but happy. Recently, the elders and the leadership have been doing the prophetic work of looking forward to what is happening in this season. And in these uncertain times and in this uncertain season, the elders believe that the verse of this time should be from Isaiah. Isaiah 43, in fact. And that great verse which says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? 
So in that vein, over the next wee while, we want to take this verse found in Isaiah and make films around that which show the new things that God is doing prophetically in our congregation. Today we've got a little interview between Alice Buckley and Stuart Aiken where they have a conversation about this verse in Isaiah. Now Alice back in February woke up through a night and got this word given to her from God. The plan was for Alice to share this word publicly at one of our normal services at the academy but that's not been possible so we've just got a short clip today to show you of this interview. Hi Alice, how's it going? Hi Stuart, yes we are surviving here in this strange time, yeah. Alice, um, you talked to us back in uh, February about a word that God had given you when you, um, you kind of woke you up early one morning, you came and you shared about that. So I just really wanted to talk to you a bit about that today and share that a wee bit with the, the church family. Yeah, so it was, a picture, it was a picture and really a dialogue with God. Um, and the picture was um, of a human body taking, taking form and shape and rising up out of the ashes. Um, first of all, kneeling and then rising up and raising my church, my body, out of the refiner's fire, out of the ashes. And see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. For I am your God and there is no other. And it seemed um, to be the embodiment of Ephesians 4, um, 16. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I felt at the, at the time it was very much speaking um, into what, what he wanted to do in our morning church on a yeah. Sunday, and that that would be where um, the humbling and the growth and the enabling in order to go out for healing of the nations. Yes, um, yes. And that um, the excitement, the sense of excitement that the body will grow together as each person finds their unique place and strength and yeah. gifting. What about um, going forward? What do you, what do you think for uh, for Scotland and for the UK at large? What do you, what do you think God's saying there? I've been struck by, you know, we're faced very much with the fragility of our physical life and also the reality of our human emotional response. Yeah. But yeah, in the fragility of all that, I feel that I'm also sensing the enormity of, of life yes. coming about. And, and that speaks to me of um, our spiritual being, that's that life that Jesus talks about when he yeah. says, I've come that they might have life and life to the fullness. This yeah. idea of being connected, we thrive, and we hear a lot about a sense now of key worker. Yes. You know, and who is our key worker? Who's who are the key parts in our body, um, in our community? You know, and actually, it's you know, there's key workers we didn't really know we were even relying on, and I think yeah. that's, that's been exceptionally helpful because mm. we're starting to realize that all that we that we held up as great and powerful and strong you know actually the, these aren't necessarily the, the people we're looking to in this time thank you so much for sharing i really appreciate that i think that's just so significant for where we're at um talk to you soon take care mm -hmm. thanks Jer. Appreciate it. Bye bye.
Now normally it's incredibly divisive to talk about politics anywhere near a church service. But Boris Johnson said this great line this week that really resonated with me, this great truth. And I'd like to share it with you because it forms a pattern into just into David's talk where Jesus makes a statement that's a great truth. Boris, after fighting coronavirus, looked right down the barrel of a camera and said, the NHS is unconquerable because it's powered by love. And whether what you think about a Tory government or whether what you think of, ah, you should have funded the NHS before this even happened, it doesn't matter because he speaks this the truth into our lives. The NHS is unconquerable because it's powered by love, this great unifying force this force not to be reckoned with, this light. And Jesus makes this proclamation to the Pharisees in John 8, where he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have light, the light of life. So the Pharisees said to them, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do not bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. And we'll hear now from the words of David and Ninch looking at this passage. Let's listen now to David as he shares about this passage. I'm not a gardener. In fact, I don't really potter about in the garden that much either. Which, for a son of Jim McNinch, is a bit heretical to say. See, my dad would always be out in the garden, whatever time it was. He would love to be out there all the time, reaping and sowing and digging and planting or whatever it is he does in there. He just loves doing it. Unfortunately, those genes haven't been passed on to me. But I do appreciate the garden and I do like getting out there. One of my favourite flowers in the garden is hopefully going to be start blooming in the next few weeks. It's called a blue geranium, at least that's what I call it. And there seems to be new plants of these popping up every year. And they have the most beautiful blue-purple flower. But the best thing about it is stepping outside and you hear and see the bees rummaging in the petals, hunting for nectar, and as a byproduct, picking up some pollen and taking that around the garden. Maybe that's why we have so many blue geraniums in the garden. And I do love it this time of year, where we see all the plants growing and the growth happening. And, well, what's happening? Well, what's happening is that light has happened and we see the light getting longer and stronger and warmer during the day. And what that does is it encourages the seeds and the bulbs and whatever to germinate and grow and push the stems through the soil to open up their leaves and their petals to gather in that sun. Because you see, light brings life. And we've read from the Bible this morning 
And we know that from the very beginning, that was there. So in the very first few chapters, we read about God creating the earth. And the first thing that God sees is, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And that was day one. That was before he got on to creating anything else. Before he created the, the plants and the flowers and the trees and the animals and the birds and the fish and us. All of that happened before life. Because light was needed to sustain life because light brings life. And when Jesus tells his people or the people that, that he was around that day that I am the light of the world, he was making an amazing claim. One, that he was God. And that would have riled up these Pharisees who were religious leaders. They didn't like what you said. So they wouldn't have been happy with that. The people would have been astounded. And not only that, the second claim was that he was there to bring light and life into their lives. An amazing claim to make. But he also said that if you follow him, you will not live in darkness. And that claim was made 2,000 years ago, but it is still relevant today. We still have the opportunity to follow Jesus. In fact, these words are still living words that we will be able to hear today. Because Jesus is calling all of us to follow him so that he can give us life, eternal life. And when he talks about the darkness, that light would conquer darkness, that these are opposites, surely they're opposite and equal. Just like war and peace. They live in tension with one another and one seems to break out over the other. And when the tension gets so close, they seem to be so matched up that only negotiation and discussion can try and keep the peace over the war. And when it fails, war takes over. And it always seems to be in that equal tension. It's the same with good and evil. Watch any film, any superhero film, Good always triumphs over evil, but just at the end credits, you'll see the evil still lurking there in the background. There's a tension between them. It's the same with money and poverty. No amount of poverty or recession or depression is going to stop wealth, because it's always there. And not amount, no amount of wealth that we have in the world has eradicated poverty, because they're, st they're opposites and there's a tension between them. But light and darkness, no there's not. Light always overcomes darkness. Darkness is pushed away when light is there. And I was trying to think of an analogy to bring to you about this. And the, the first thing that came to me was, when I go away with the young people to Soul Survivor every year, we have to camp. Now Soul Survivor is a youth event. I go as a leader before you say anything. And we have to camp out in a big field with thousands of other people. Um, it's not wild camping. There are toilet blocks and showers. It's not too bad. And over the years, I've tried to make things a wee bit more luxurious for myself because I'm getting a bit older. So I have a camp bed. I have a wee sitting chair thing that I have. I've not been able to get an ensuite toilet and shower. Seemingly, that's not allowed. So when my body starts saying that you need to go to the toilet in the middle of the night, which seems to only happen when I'm away camping, I then have to think, I've got to get from here to the toilet block in the middle of the night and I have to negotiate tents, which I think I could probably do, but not the guy ropes. So I take out my trusty torch, flick on the switch and a beam of light breaks through the darkness and I can get to the toilet block and back in relative safety, not falling flat on my face in the mud over a guy rope. Then I realised that doesn't tell us the whole story. About Jesus being the light of the world. Yes, he pierces through the darkness and he shines on the things that are in our lives. However, it's kind of like saying that in the living room I've got a little lamp or a candle flickering away. All it does is light up the area around about it and we can maybe make out shapes of other things like the coffee table, the carpet, the decoration on the wall. We might be able to see that. Stick on the big light and everything is revealed. We see it all. We see the coffee table and the film of dust that's on there that really needs Mr Sheen on it. And we see the carpet that's maybe, maybe looking a little bit threadbare in the corner or really needs a good hoovering. And we see the decorations 
that maybe needs a fresh coat of paint or you see the cracks in the wall. You see the torch and the candle and the lamp only light up parts of things. The rest of it is kept hidden. But when the big light is on and shining on it, we see everything, the good and the bad. And when Jesus says that he wants to bring light to the world, he exposes the good and the bad. But he goes on to say to the Pharisees who are trying to trip him up, you're trying to judge here and I'm not here to judge. You're judging things by earthly standards, not by heavenly standards. Jesus doesn't expose the bad things in our lives to post it on social media for likes and laughs. He doesn't expose the things in our lives so as if he was a paparazzi trying to get the next scandalous headline to put in the press. That's not what he does. He wants to expose the things in our life that are not good for us, to remove them so that we can have life. Just like the garden. When we go out today to see the garden, we'll be looking around and saying, does the grass need cut? Or if it does, let's trim it. Is there weeds around? Well, let's get the proper tools out and dig the weeds out so that life can grow. Does that plant need cutting back? Does it need deadheaded? Because the new shoots are not going to come through if we don't do that. That's how Jesus deals with us. And he takes the rubbish from our lives. If we give it to him, he'll take that rubbish and he'll put it away. He'll put it on the bonfire. He'll throw it in the compost heap. He th- throws it away. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you today. Whether you're a Christian or not, he wants to come and take that rubbish from your life and shine his light on you to give you life. I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus, to find out more about him. The story that we read today comes from a book called John in the New Testament. And it's part of four books in the New Testament that look at the life of Jesus. The other three are Matthew, Mark and Luke. And I'd encourage you to read them. And in there you'll see how he meets and deals with people that have issues in their lives. You'll meet some people like the woman at the well in Zacchaeus. The woman at the well was hiding away her guilt and shame. Jesus comes along, shines his light upon her and he frees her from that. So much so she doesn't hide away anymore. She actually goes and gets people and says, come and find this man who told me everything about my life and he's here to give you life. Or Zacchaeus who was a greedy, nasty, swindling kind of man. He meets Jesus and he is totally transformed and he becomes a man who is known for his generosity and goodness and kindness. There are many more stories and there are stories and people that we know whose lives have been turned around because of Jesus shining his light upon them and giving them life. If you're not a Christian and you would like to find out more about Jesus, contact us, get onto our website and uh, get an email address. There, There's a way to contact us. Or why not go onto the website and sign up for Alpha, which is starting this week online on Wednesday. We would love to see you there. If you are a Christian, can I just point out to you that there are still things in our lives that are hidden and we keep them as secrets and lies. And God wants to shine, Jesus wants to shine his light upon your life. And he wants to take that away so that the garden continues to grow. Because that's what we need to see. We have been talking about this verse for us called, Behold, I am doing a new thing. The next thing it says, can't you see it? It's springing up. It can't spring up if those weeds are still in our lives. If those things that are there in our lives are holding us back, are still there, not letting that new life grow. So why don't you give it to Jesus and let him shine his light on you to bring his life into your life? Our service is just about to draw to a close, but let's just read the words of Jesus once again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. And Jesus answered them, Even if I do not bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. Rebecca is going to play us out today. And then there will also be time to just hang about in the comments eh, after the service. God bless and amen.